الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters my dear children السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we'll continue today our talk regarding who are those who are protected by Allah from Satan and I was reading in the previous episode from Surah Bani Israel, chapter 17, uh, Surah Al-Isra as well. Uh, and I stopped at verse 33, so now I'm starting from verse 34. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَا لَلْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ حَتَّى يَبْلُوَ أَشُدَّهِ do not come near the orphan's property except to improve it until he attains the age of full strength. We already mentioned this before because it is mentioned in more than one chapter in the Quran. It is, it is how should we look after the orphans, someone who lost both parents. A child who has no sense of controlling his own estate or his own wealth. He has no one to support him. And then there is a kafil, a guardian. And this guardian should observe the rules and regulations stated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran. Because you will be questioned about it in the Day of Judgment. And you will hear you will hear this command in more than one episode anyway. وَأَوْفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ كَانَ مَسْؤُولًا Fulfill all your contractual obligations, your promises, your agreements, your covenants, because you are going to be questioned about it on the day of judgment. Just as simple as that. So remember, you cannot get away with it, maybe in this life. You can get away with it. You have a marriage contract. You did not give your wife her. Even you didn't pay her mahr. Which you promised to pay. You didn't give her dowry to her. You are not fulfilling your contractual obligations. Looking after your wife and your kids. It's your responsibility as a man. To pay. To support the family. It's not your wife's responsibility. So look at the terms and conditions of the marriage contract in the same way. You look at the terms and the conditions of an employment contract and you know how much you are earning, how much uh, holiday you will get, and your SMP, your SSP, and all these things. Please, try to fulfill the terms and the conditions of the marriage contract, whether you are a man or a woman, because she has obligations and duties and responsibilities as well as the man. But they are different. They are different. It's my responsibility to support my family financially, fully. If my wife is working and earning, it is her own property. If she would like to help, it is accepted as a charity. And no harm in doing that. If we would really and truly study the terms and the conditions of a marriage contract and know that we would be questioned about it on the Day of Judgment, the number of divorces I am dealing with at the moment can easily be reduced by maybe 90%, unfortunately. In the next verse, verse 35, وَأَوْفُ الْكَيْلَ إِذَا كِلْتُمْ وَزِنُوا بِالْقِسْطَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا Again, here we are talking about weights and measures. That you must give full measure when you measure and weight with a balance that is straight. How often do people calibrate their scales to make sure that they are giving the right reading? That is better and fairer in the final determination. Unfortunately, uh, when people cheat in the weight and the measure, the money they are earning is unlawful. 
unlawful money. They are stealing from the people. There is a chapter in the Quran, Surah Al Mutaffifin, chapter 83. Al Mutaffif is someone who steals from you something very, very little, very small, tafif. You can't feel it. And instead of giving you 1,000 grams as one kilogram, he gives you 999. Now you, nobody's going to detect the one gram. And Allah says, Why lonely mutafafin? What a great punishment is waiting for those. When they sell, they give less, and when they buy, they want more. Mutafif is someone who steals something very small. What about those who steal that much? Imagine, imagine. In the next verse, do you know in, uh, in, in this country, we're so lucky we have trading and standards, uh, uh, trading, sorry, trading standards, uh, 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 weight and measures, they, 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 <clears throat> the department which is specialized in checking the scales, checking even the uh, pumps at pumping stations for petrol. They, they, they come, they, they, they check the reading and they take some fuel in, in, in a special container and they compare whether the pump is giving the right volume or not. Even uh, drinks, you won't believe that actually. All the drinks, they have the spirits and they have a measure. Even, even people steal, they, 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 they give less. And, and the Department of, uh, of Trading Standards, they check on this as well. Because one, one CC here and one CC there, the, the, the owner of the bar or the pub, he would make a lot of money by, by selling less than what he should have given. Anyway... We have to be fair. And, and it, we, again, we, when you talk about weights and measures, another example, another example. Let's say I am an employee and uh, in my, in my uh, uh, contract of employment, I, I start from nine to five. I arrive in the morning at five past nine. And I sign or I clock in nine. And I leave at five to five and I clock five. How can you do that? This is mutaffif. You are, you are stealing from your employer. You can't do that. How can you be paid for time which you did not do? The other thing, of course, when you are on your phone, you are supposed to be working and you are on your phone. You are doing your job and look at your phone and responding to the messages and sending a message to this one and message to that one. You can't do that. This is deception. People don't understand that. وَزِنُوا بِالْقِسْطَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Give full measure when you measure and wait with a balance that is straight. In verse 36, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge for surely the hearing, the sight, the heart, all of those shall be questioned. So what we are talking here about is very interesting. Don't spy on people. Don't try to find holes and faults in people. Because you are going to be questioned about all this. Your hearing, your sight, your fuad, the heart and the mind. كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسُولٍ And in Surah Al-Hujurat, we need, we need actually to cover uh, some of the verses in Surah Al-Hujurat, inshallah. I will do that as well. Uh, the footnote <clears throat> idle curiosity may lead us to nose into evil through our ignorance that it is evil. We must guard against every such danger. We must only hear the things that are known to us to be of good report and see things that are good and instructive and entertain in our hearts 
feelings or in our minds, ideas that we have reason to expect will be spiritually profitable to us. And social media comes here. The fake news we receive, the messages we keep forwarding backward and forward, and they are all lies. And we take part in spreading the lies. Just as simple as that. We shall be called to account for the exercise of every faculty that has been given to us. This goes a little further than a famous sculpture on a Japanese temple in which three monkeys are shown as putting their hands to their ears, eyes, and mouth, respectively, to show that they were not prepared to hear any evil or see any evil or speak any evil. Here, idle curiosity is condemned. Futility is to be avoided even if it does not reach the degree of positive evil. So let us try to be better than the monkeys, okay? Please. And then in the next verse 37, chapter 17, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Oh dear. Do not walk on earth with insolence. Don't be arrogant. You know, Satan was haughty, was arrogant. And Allah says here, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Do not walk on the earth with insolence. إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضَ وَلَنْ تَبْلُغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولًا You will never be able to penetrate the earth or reach the heights of the mountains. You are nothing. You are nothing. Why do you show off? Why do you hurt the feelings of other people? Uh, Umar al-Khayyam, in one of his Rubaiyat, he said, فَمْشِ الْهُوَيْنَا إِنَّ هَذَا الثَّرَى مِنْ أَعْيُنٍ سَاحِرَةِ الْإِحْوَرَارِ Walk with humility on earth because the dust you are walking on is made out of beautiful eyes which died and turned into dust. So remember, remember. Please, one day you will become dust and people will walk over you. Remember this. We have so many examples, beautiful examples in the Quran covering just this point. We will come back to it again. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 38, كُلُّ ذَلِكَ كَانَ سَيِّئُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ مكروه. All the things which mentioned earlier, the evil is hateful in the sight of your Lord. Of all such things, the evil is hateful in the sight of your Lord. The things he prohibited us from doing, they are hated by Allah. The evil of it is hated by Allah. And then Allah ends the set of the instructions here. God's moral law here. ذلك مما أوحى إليك ربك من الحكمة. These are among the precepts of wisdom which your Lord has revealed to you. حكمة. ومن أُتي الحكمة فقد أُتي خيرا كثيرا. Whoever will be given حكمة, he in fact has been given a great, great goodness. خيراً كثيرة. A lot of good being given to him. So let us try to be حكماء. Like Luqman, we'll, we'll read about him later in the series. And then Allah ends now the conclusion. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرًا فَتُلْقَى فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَلُومًا مَدَحُورًا And do not Take with Allah another object of worship. Be because if you do so, you will be thrown into the hellfire. Maluman mathura, blameworthy and rejected. So in this 
verses, uh, which I covered in this uh, episode and the previous one. We started from verse 31 to verse 39, Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17. Now I am going to move to uh, Surah Al-Furqan, uh, chapter 25. In Surah Al-Furqan, uh, starting from verse 63, Allah is giving us the attributes of His beloved servants. He called them Ibadur Rahman. Ibadur Rahman. The attribute Ar Rahman was not known to the pagans in Arabia at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they Alaihi Wasallam. They didn't know who is Ar-Rahman. Uh, they, they knew Allah. And in one uh, treaty, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dictated uh, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So the scriber wrote Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And Quraysh responded by saying, no, no, no. We only know Allah. We don't know Rahman or Rahim. Delete. So he deleted. Fine. No problem. Bismillah. And in this surah, Surah Al-Furqan, when it was said to the pagans, in verse 60, 60, Rahman, and if it was said to them, or whenever it is said to them, prostrate yourselves to Ar-Rahman, Rahman. who is Ar-Rahman? We don't know him. And should we prostrate ourselves to something you command us to do? And, and they, they, it increased their, their, uh, their aversion. They, they walked away. So Allah wanted to explain to them what are the qualities of the servants of the most gracious, the most merciful, Ibadur Rahman. So you will understand the Rahman. If you understand his servants, the conduct of his servants, then you will be able to reflect on the Lord they are uh, serving. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And the servants of Allah, most gracious, are those. Now we have a definition. Those who are going to be protected from Satan. If they do all these things, they will be protected from Satan. What do, they, what do they do? What are their attributes or qualities? Those who walk on the earth in humility. Again, it's mentioned again. So those who walk on the earth in humility, those who humble themselves, they don't show off. They are not arrogant. They are not haughty. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And when the ignorant addresses them aggressively, when an ignorant person addresses them aggressively, the response would be سَلَامًا Peace. Peace. So imagine someone who walks with humility, they humble themselves, they're not arrogant, and when someone insults them, they say peace. Peace and goodbye. Thank you very much indeed. Beautiful. And by saying this, you can achieve inner peace. No doubt. I'm not going to get involved into a fight and argument with you because you insulted me. No, no, thank you. I, I, the footnotes is very interesting, actually. Three, one, two, three. Ignorant in a moral sense. Uh, to address someone in, in the aggressive sense. So their humility is shown in two ways. One, to those in real search of knowledge, they give such knowledge as they have and as the recipients can assimilate. Two, to those who merely dispute, they do not speak harshly, but say peace, as much as to say, may it be well with you, may you repent and be better, or may Allah give me peace from such wrangling, or peace and goodbye. Let me leave you. This is something 
many people face in their life. Someone comes to you with a question. Uh, uh, he wants to, to either uh, uh, learn or he's coming to argue. And he's trying to, to uh, belittle you. He's trying to find holes in what you are saying. Fine. Thank you very much indeed. Peace and goodbye. The uh, next verse, 64, chapter 25, Al-Furqan. Al-Furqan, by the way, it's one of the names or attributes of the Quran, the criterion, uh, the thing which differentiates between right and wrong. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَمْ Those who spend the night in adoration of their Lord, prostrate and standing. They are praying during the night. They are praying while the people are asleep. Their sides are not comfortable in bed. They feel more comfortable when they get up and do their wudu and they stand and they pray. And subhanallah, the Prophet said in a hadith, Afshu salam. Spread greetings of peace among you. Afshu salam. Wa'at'imu ta'am. Give food to people. وَصَلُّوا وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ And pray while people are asleep. تَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامِ You will enter paradise in peace. So, make an effort. Wake up every day before Fajr. Half an hour. Half an hour. Do your wudu. Stand and do your tahajjud. Then pray your fajr and go back to bed or go to work. It depends what time is, is, is the fajr. Another quality of Ibadur Rahman is the next one in verse 65. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا صرف عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمَ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا And those who pray, our Lord, please protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. For its wrath is indeed an affliction grievous. So they are just saying this invocation. رَبَّنَا صرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما In the next verse 66. Because it is evil indeed. It is as an abode and as a place to rest in. So they recognized, they believed that there will be severe punishment to the wrongdoers. And they are asking Allah to protect them from the punishment of the hellfire, from the torture of hell. And they are aware that it is not a good place to stay there. It's not, it's not a nice place to go there and live there or stay there or, or, or. No, no, it's not. Just by feeling this and saying it, it gives them a special quality to become the servants of the most gracious, Ibadur Rahman. By the way, the word abd, when you translate it literally, it's slave. If I am your slave, you are going to humiliate me, you are going to ill-treat me, you are going to abuse me, and so on. But if I am the slave of Allah, it is an honor. It is an honor to be the slave of Allah, Abdullah. What a beautiful title. This is a title, like Sir and Lord and King and Kaiser and uh, Caesar and... All these titles. Abdullah, I am the slave of Allah. I'm happy because when you are the slave of Allah, you'll be honored by Allah. You are not going to be ill-treated if you are the slave to a human being. And those when they spend, they strike the balance between being wasteful and being so miser and tight, he always strikes the balance. Those who, when they spend, are not extravagant and not niggardly, but hold a just balance between 
those extremes. Again, something you heard before, didn't you? The qualities of the true servants of Ar-Rahman. In the next verse, 68, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. And those who do not invoke any other God with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And they do not slay such a life as Allah has made sacred except for just a cause. You cannot kill an innocent soul. No way. No way. If you kill one innocent soul as if you have killed the all of humanity. مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever would kill one soul as if he has killed all of humanity. And whoever will give life to one soul as if he has given life to all of humanity. And those who do not commit fornication, adultery, sex outside marriage. Allah combined here in this verse three major crimes. Associating partners with him to worship another God besides him. Number two, kill an innocent soul. Number three, committing fornication. And whoever will do any of this will meet punishment in this life. And on the day of judgment, his punishment will be doubled. And Al-Khulud in Arabic means to stay there eternally, to live there eternally. He will be in eternal punishment. Muhanan, with disgrace and humiliation and shame and ignominy. But Allah is known as Al-Ghafoor, Al-Rahim, Al-Tawwab. Then is there a chance for me to repent? Yes. The door of repentance is widely open. We should repent all the time. إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله وفورا رحيما. Except those who would repent, believe, because he lost his faith when he killed someone or committed adultery. وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And to do good deeds. What will happen to them? Allah will change, will replace all their evil deeds with good deeds. So they are not going to start from zero. No, no. All the negative. Let's say this, this guy had minus 10 million in his file. 10 million. Minus 10 million points. Then Allah will not only purge the sins and delete them and forget and forgive and overlook. No. He will replace the minus with plus. Can you imagine? So your file now is in, in credit. In credit. وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَا تَابَ Those who would repent and do good deeds, they in fact turn to Allah in repentance. Let me read the full translation of the two verses, 70 and 71. Unless he repents, believes, and works righteous deeds. For Allah will change the evil of such person into good, and Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. And whoever repents and does good has truly turned to Allah in repentance. So beautiful. The next attribute of Ibadur Rahman, the servants of the most gracious, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ Those who witness no falsehood. You cannot bribe him to give a false testimony. I'll give you 100 pounds and you say, yes, I saw this man killing this woman. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا And if they pass by futility, they pass by it with honorable avoidance. اللغو Useless, something which is useless. Like the social media we receive all the time. Wasting our time and committing sins all the time. The messages we keep sending backward and forward. Witness no falsehood has two significations. 
both implied in this passage. One, those who give no evidence that is false. And two, those who do not assist at anything which implies fraud or falsehood. You cannot be part of this, take part in that. There is not only condemnation of positive falsehood or of being mixed up with things implying falsehood, but futilities, vain random talk, unpleasant jokes, useless show, etc. are all condemned. If a good man finds himself in such an affair, he must withdraw from it in an honorable, dignified way, not in a fussy, arrogant way. Just as simple as that. In the next verse, 73, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا وَعُمْيَانَ And those, when they are admonished with the signs of their Lord, they do not droop down at them as if they were deaf or blind. They are walking with your friend and he's gazing at a woman walking. And you say to him, excuse me, lower your gaze. Allah says, lower your gaze. And you say to him, I don't care. Nothing to do with you. Mind your business. No. If I, remind, if I say to you, don't shout at your parents. Be kind to them. And you say to me, I don't care. And I give you a verse in the Quran which says that. And you say, I don't care about it. Allah is saying, you should never be like that. If you are really one of the servants of the most gracious, if you do anything wrong and someone corrects you, giving you a verse from the Quran to correct you, you should accept it. Don't be arrogant and don't refuse to accept it. That's what Allah is saying here. We must also pray for the maintenance of Allah's law after us through our wives and descendants. In our eyes, they should not be mere accidents or playthings, but a real comfort and fulfillment of our spiritual longings. longings. Perhaps through them, as well through ourselves, we may, by Allah's grace, be able to give a lead for truth and righteousness. This is the footnote of the uh, next verse, which I'm going to read now. Verse 74, something to do with the family. Something to do about our wives, our spouses, our husbands, our children, our grandchildren. Can you imagine just by saying this and by believing in it, you become a servant of the most gracious? وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيٌ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا And those who pray our Lord grant unto us spouses, husbands, wives, and offspring, children and grandchildren, who will be the comfort of our eyes and give us the grace to lead the righteous. I read the footnote again. We must also pray for the maintenance of Allah's law after us through our wives, husbands, and descendants. In our eyes, they should not be mere accidents or playthings, but a real comfort and fulfillment of our spiritual longings. Perhaps through them, as well as through ourselves, we may, by Allah's grace, be able to give a lead for truth and righteousness. In the next verse, Allah tells us something so beautiful. أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلام. Those are the ones who will be rewarded with the highest place in heaven because of their patient constancy. Therein shall they be met with salutations and peace. خالدين فيها Hasunat mustaqarran wa muqama. Dwelling therein, how beautiful an abode and the place of rest. So these were the attributes of Ibadur Rahman in Surah Al Furqan, chapter 25, starting from verse 63 until verse 76, which tells you about the reward in the hereafter. 
Thank you very much indeed for listening. May Allah bless you all. And please uh, remember, we are still in need of your donations to complete our project at South Water Islamic Center. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.